Howdy, it's Tubal Cane again. And in this video I'm going to make a backing plate for this little chuck here, so that's the subject. Recently at an auction I bought uh, a Logan lathe, my second Logan lathe, and with it there were three chucks. Uh, there was a three jaw or a four jaw chuck that was on the machine and then these two chucks just uh, came in a box. And uh, I was pretty excited about them, especially about this one. This is a four inch buck chuck. Uh, just a true. So that's really a nice little chuck. However, uh, I was already mounted on the lathe and I realized this is not the right size thread. That's not a one and a half eight, it's like a two and a quarter or a one and three quarter eight, I believe is what it is. So I have to make a new backing plate for that, but that's not going to be discussed on this video. This little three and a half inch uh, English made uh, three jaw is the subject of this video and uh, it had just a little light rust on it which I took off extra set of jaws no key but I found a key here at, in my shop that fits and it had no backing plate at all and I'll take the rest of this rust off once I get a backing plate on it so in other words there's no way to fasten this on to uh, the machine and I want to fit this so that it'll uh, fit my Atlas South Bend and Logan Lathes. I did a little surfing on the internet and I came up with uh, uh, this little machine shop. This is the first thing I bought from them and I, I think they're a pretty good outfit. And it came real quickly. Uh, priority mail. This was 20 bucks. And it's got the right size thread, inch and a half. And that fits right onto the Atlas lathe as it is now but this is four inch they, they did not offer a three and a half this is a three and a half so there'll be some machining to do to make it uh, uh, the right diameter I think I'll thin it down a little bit too it, it seems like it, that's just a little chunky and, and thick it makes this chuck too long when you combine the back plate and then there'll be this step on here that needs to be machined and I'm going to do all of that while it is mounted on the threaded spindle of the Atlas lathe. The cast iron backing plate is mounted on the uh, Atlas Craftsman 12 inch lathe and the first thing I will machine is uh, the outside diameter. It's four inches now. This chuck is exactly three and a half. So I'm going to take it down to three and a half, but I like to rough it down using uh, an outside caliper, and then when I get close, I'll use a micrometer. But this is nice to use as as you uh, proceed down to dimension, and when it finally just barely slips over, you know you're at least uh, at at this dimension, which is about a sixteenth of an inch over the three and a half, or should I say? three and nine sixteenths inches. This is cast iron. I'm hoping that it machines real nicely. Let me go over the cutting speeds here. Now this is a four inch diameter at this time but it'll be reduced to three and a half and I'm running the machine at 164 RPM. Now that translates to about 150 feet per minute uh, actual cutting speed and cast iron cuts real well in the range of between 140 and 150 so I'm right on. Now as the diameter gets smaller the uh, cutting speed is also going to uh, get reduced slightly. Again that's a carbide tool and the depth of cut is 20 thousandths I do not know what the feed is because I'm using my automatic feed here, so I do not know what it is in thousands. I just know that it's a nice slow feed. Now this cast iron is self-lubricating, so it does not need any oil. There's so much uh, graphite in it, and you're going to find the chips are very black and messy, and uh, your hands will be black when you're done with a job like this. And this is going to take quite a few passes and I will not even begin to, to show all of them. A lot of material 
to be removed here uh, on a relatively small blade. Another twenty thousandths. So on. This is about the tenth pass, and the uh, the caliper now slips over it. So from now on, I will use the micrometer. That means I'm getting uh, fairly close, and within a, about a sixteenth of an inch. There's ten thousandths to go, so we'll take that in one pass. And this will be uh, the last pass. It would not matter at all, even if I was about one sixteenth of an inch under. It looks like some chucks are built that way. And I'm right on. Now while I'm still working on this uh, periphery, I'm going to reset the tool and make a nice chamfer here on the back side. I'm cutting a nice healthy chamfer on the back side here where my ruler is touching using the back side of this uh, triangular tool. As mentioned before, to my liking, the whole casting is a little too thick here where I have my fingers. So I'm going to machine this uh, surface off. Now, Little Machine calls this the registration boss. But I'm going to face this off so it's clean and take just a little bit uh, off to reduce the thickness. And then I will machine a new registration boss on it to fit my own chuck. And these uh, castings were really rough machined uh, such that all the surfaces needed to be uh, remachined other than the thread or maybe the back side of it. Now when I said these were rough castings I, I, I meant that uh, the dimensions were rough. They actually were machined quite nicely and this is very free machining nice gray cast iron. I'm very pleased with it. And I just about finished uh, facing off the registration boss, and I, which was about an eighth of an inch. So now, I'm still going to reduce the thickness here about another sixteenth, and then I can start machining the new registration boss. I was rather impressed that uh, Little Machine Shop Company uh, dot com uh, gave a little direction sheet with this explaining how to do this if you don't understand it and uh, you can see here they call it the registration boss which in my case for this little chuck is going to be uh, 2.625 and eighth inch deep approximately that isn't too critical I've taken the first few passes on the new uh, registration boss and I'm still using my uh, carbide tool which has quite a large uh, radius on it and as I get closer to dimension 
and I'm plenty oversized yet on this diameter but as I get closer to the dimension I'm going to switch to a regular high-speed steel tool uh, facing type tool with a very sharp point so I can get a sharp corner in here on this shoulder and I'll take the uh, piece down to its final dimensions uh, both depth wise and diameter wise with that tool the step is well formed I probably went in a little farther than I needed to and then at some point I'll face this off to the to the correct uh, uh, dimension but it's very easy to use this caliper now to check the diameter and I've changed the tool I've got a high-speed steel facing tool with a sharp point in there that'll give me a good square shoulder in there and I have about uh, 20 thousandths to go I like to use the carriage stop when I'm doing an operation like this so then I'll, I'll just bring the carriage up till it touches the stop and uh, that way I'm coming in the same exact same distance on each pass and then on my very last pass I will move this out uh, a couple thousandths and I will uh, come in on the diameter and then to the face and I will face out for the very last pass so that I'm uh, really squaring things up in the corner. This is what it looks like from this uh, view and I'm feeding by hand and I'll come right up against the carriage stop which is right there and so now I know that I've gone in the correct distance this way back it out measure and take the next cut I like to approach that final dimension very slowly and measuring often so I don't spoil the piece I am now at the right diameter but I am a little bit uh, too long right here so I'm going to take off uh, about twenty thousandths face off about twenty thousandths and then I am at my uh, diameter and depth and I'm done on the lathe I have faced off this surface it's a little less than an eighth of an inch remember I don't want this uh, X marked uh, surface to touch the bottom here it isn't necessary the registration will be done by uh, this diameter that I turned and this surface here will rest up against this surface the X surface is irrelevant and now I'm going to take it off the lathe and go to the bench. In order to unscrew this piece from the uh, lathe spindle, I had to use this strap wrench. There just wasn't any other good way to hang on to it. I didn't have enough grip in my own hand. And I certainly didn't want to put any tool marks on there, so that strap wrench was a handy little tool. Next, I need three holes equally spaced here for the cap screws that will hold the backing plate onto the chuck. Now we've got three threaded holes here, one, two, three, and they are quarter twenty, that's why I had it marked as such. And I have already installed in those three holes transfer screws, Hyman transfer screws. One of my other videos talks in de detail about these, but they come in every size. Make sure you get several sets, you will love them. It's the most practical way to transfer blind threaded holes. So now I will put the uh, plate on there and I'm going to temporarily mark it with some index marks here so it'll go back on always the same and then later I'm going to center punch some index marks on there I like to put some scrap metal on there rather than pounding directly on it and it should transfer all three at the same time I don't know if I mentioned that uh, these transfer screws are sticking just slightly above the surface so when you run a straight edge across here you, I can feel them catch on to the tip of the transfer screws
ta da! One, two, three perfectly marked holes. Now I will center pump those a little deeper than what they are, and then I will proceed to drill them. And uh, I probably am also going to counter bore them from this side. I like to pilot drill uh, these precision holes on my little Cameron micro drill and uh, that's with 16 uh, inch and I've already done that. Now I'll take them over to a larger drill press and drill them eighth inch all the way through with a nice sharp new bit. I'm at the drill press now and I'm going to drill them out uh, eighth inch with a nice sharp bit. Right into the wood. It's handy to have uh, scrap wood when you do something like this. Next I'm drilling them out quarter inch and it would even be better if I use an F drill. It went just a little bit oversized. And don't let it get away from you when the bit comes through. Otherwise hold it in a vise. I had full intentions of counter boring these holes as such so that uh, the socket head scrap cap screws would be a countersunk like this. But what I discovered is that because of the diameter here of the head and the diameter of the, the counter bore here, it's more than likely going to break out the side, which to me is uh, verboten. So uh, I'm just going to have to settle for having the cap screws. Uh, exposed like this even though I don't like it but uh, I've seen many of them made that way but that's the way it's going to be. Now be sure and take uh, a countersink and just deburr your holes real well from both sides because on this side you don't want any burrs that will keep this uh, surface from seating uh, on the chuck or run a file across it either one will do but I like the looks of a a little uh, internal chamfer with a uh, countersink. Now I'm going to mount this on the chuck. Alright, now let's proof this thing. I've got a piece of ground stock held in the little chuck and an uh, indicator up against it, zeroed out. I need to turn off the light to get rid of the glare and just rotate this a little bit by hand and you'll see that I'm within about a thousandth which exceeds my expectation. I do not think this is a high-end chuck but the machining came out alright and that's how you put a backing plate on a chuck. That's it. I took a little of that fine abrasive paper and cleaned up the outside. We got quite a stain there but it could, could matter less really. And that's the end of that and I'm uh, satisfied with that. I did put that uh, witness mark on here someplace that I told you that I was going to do. Right there if I ever take it apart I want to put it back together exactly the same way. Now watch one of my upcoming videos where I make a backing plate for this buck chuck because this one doesn't fit. But remember this is an adjust a true type chuck which is really a four jaw chuck and a three jaw chuck combined so they can be zeroed out and you might find that of interest and be sure and watch my hundreds of other shop videos. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.